Hi everyone! In this video I will explain you how I made my custom keyboard and mouse which I connected to iOS devices from previous videos. These devices are based on Arduino platform. And to make the same devices you will need the following. For keyboard, an Arduino Pro Mini module with 3.3 voltage, a HM11 Bluetooth module, a Bluetooth keyboard itself. You must find a keyboard where is enough space inside for Pro Mini and Bluetooth module. Also, this keyboard should have batteries of 3 voltage to power the modules. I ordered this one. This is no name cheap keyboard, but it fits perfectly for my purpose. Again, an Arduino Pro Mini module with 3.3 voltage and HM. 11 module, a mouse itself, and you must find mouse where two batteries are used to provide three voltage for modules. Also mouse sensor is needed, likely you won't be able to connect native mouse sensor of your mouse and you will need to replace it with another one with the same form factor and power. I choose the ADMS5030 mouse sensor. I could find a working library for this mouse sensor and was able to order it from eBay. And of course you will need any USB to UART module to upload sketches to Pro Mini and set up Bluetooth modules. Let's start from Bluetooth modules. Each module has to have specific service name so iOS device can find such modules and distinguish where is the keyboard and where is the mouse. So first of all you need to set up service name for each Bluetooth module. I choose 0001 service name for mouse and 0002 for keyboard. To set service name for Bluetooth module connect it with USB to UART module like this. Ground, power, take spin of USB to UART module goes to a rig spin of HM11 module and the rig spin goes to take spin. Then connect USB to UART module to your computer. Launch Arduino ID. Select appropriate COM port and open serial monitor window. Now if you type AT command you should see OK response if everything was connected right. Type AT plus UID question mark command to get current service name. To set a new service name you should type the same command and add a new name at the end. Finally let's check that the new name has been set successfully. In the same way set a name for keyboard. The name should be 0002. When Bluetooth modules are ready, we can switch directly to our devices. Let's start from keyboard. This is how my completed keyboard looks like. The first moment we need provide the power for our modules and it's better to engage the native switch on the front side of keyboard. So we can turn on our modules as usual. To reach this goal, I added a new switch, which is used to switch power between native electronic part and my modules. This picture shows how I connect power. VCC contact of battery I left as this, and this contact goes to native switch. But ground contact now goes to my new switch. Using the switch I choose what to power native electronic part or my modules. Here is the native power on off switch is placed and I connected a wire between it and VCC contact of Pro Mini. So when I need to power my modules I switch this switch to this position. The native switch also should be at on state. But when I need to charge the battery I set switch to another state. Now I will show how I connected Bluetooth module. Note I flipped over HM11 module here. First connect ground and power. 
I used pins 10 and 11 to connect it. I didn't use RX TX pins of Pro Mini. If I used these pins, I couldn't upload and use sketches to Pro Mini whenever I need. Now let's talk about keys of keyboard and how to connect to them. Any keyboard has a lot of keys, so it would be complex if we have one common line for all keys and a separate line for each key. Something like this. In my keyboard it's about 60 keys and it would be next 60 lines. Instead of this the key matrix is used. Key matrix allow to reduce number of lines significantly and it looks like this. We have one line for each row of keys and another line for each column of keys. Let's see an example. We have one, two, three lines of rows and A, B, C lines for columns. If we want to check if S button is pressed, we set high level for line 2 and check signal on line B. If S button is pressed, we get high level on line B, otherwise we get low level. This approach allows to reduce number of contacts if we have many buttons to connect. Here on electronic board we see different contacts which are marked with similar names. Here I guess C means column and R means row. But names can be different and depends on keyboard. For example here I have an another keyboard and meaning of labels here are not so obvious. Actually this is my first keyboard I was experimenting with. But anyway, your task is to determine pairs of contact for all keys you need. You can find appropriate pairs of contact using multimeter by checking resistance between two contacts and pressing up and down key on keyboard like this. Important note, resistance may be different between different contents. I had a problem when I set my multimeter checking resistance to maximum of 200 ohms. But resistance between contacts of space K was higher, about 300 ohms. And I wasn't able to find these contacts until I set resistance to appropriate maximum value. In my keyboard I use 6 keys. W, A, S, D, R and space. And here are pairs of contacts for each key. As you can see here I have three row contacts R0, R2 and R3. I connect these contacts to Arduino pins and use them to set high or low signal. R0 goes to pin 2 on Arduino, R2 goes to pin 3 and R3 goes to pin 4. Now I need connect column contacts to Arduino pins which I use to check if I have high or low signal. C2 goes to pin 5, C1 goes to pin 6, C3 goes to pin 7, C11 goes to pin 8, C4 goes to pin 9. I will read signal on these pins to understand if some specific key is pressed and to set low level by default I need to connect these pins to ground via resistors with high resistance. As you can see I removed the reset button from Pro Mini to have enough space to place resistors. And one more time. If I want to check if WK is pressed, I do the following. In my code I set high level on pin 2, which is connected to R0 contact. Then I check if I have high level on pin 5, which is connected to C2 contact. Quick look at code for keyboard. For each key I create an instance of keyboard pin observer class. Here I set pin which should be used for reading a level of signal and this pin which should be set to high level. Initialization. Here we check the current state. And here we check if state of any key has been changed. 
then we need to send an update to device. We send one byte where each bit of the byte match to some key. For example, if the first bit is set, means double key is pressed, other byte is not set. I hope it's clear and we can move on to mouse. Here is a diagram how I connect all parts. Remember, I replaced native mouse sensor with a custom one named RDNS5030. Maybe you will use another one, but if you want your mouse will work with input framework, you should send package like mine. Here is the code for mouse. Package consists of 4 bytes. The first is static, must be equal 127. It means the beginning of package. Second byte is mouse offset by x axis. Third byte is mouse offset by y axis. And the last byte is for states of mouse buttons. The same like in the keyboard. If the first bit is set, means left button is pressed, otherwise is not set. And the same for right button. One important note. If you work with mouse sensor for the first time, always test it with lens. Don't check if it works just by your fingers. Likely you won't get any useful data from it. You will find all use source code in the description of the video. Here I installed test project on this iPad and iPhone. Let's check it. If I close the app on iPhone, my devices are immediately connected to another. So now it's possible to use these devices with any your own apps. That's all. I hope this video will be useful for you. If you like it, press like button and share it. Thanks and bye.